their own and do not reflect the views of the creators, hosts, or that of Cryer Media or their partners. The show may cover sensitive topics and information and discuss triggering issues. Listener discretion is advised. Do them starting the day with a little, little chocolate. Do you, you see want that? to uh, do you want what? to run any more errands before we start? <laughs> no, Such I'm good. Dude. I'm done running my errands. I am a little bit late. It's like we're, we're we got to go a little bit late. I got some meetings. Yeah, I had meetings. We're, we're interviewing this guy Kevin, yeah. and I'm like Kevin, and then I go back and I look, and I'm like Kevin J Johnson. Is that? Not that. Is that is that that guy? And you're that like, guy. yeah. I'm like, okay. Well, maybe we should get on the phone and have a little bit of a conversation about how you want to handle this today. Oh yeah, we did on right the way home. You. Yeah, I was and on then, the way home. You called me in the car. We figured it out. And then he lo- He goes, okay. Kevin's on it at at one thirty Eastern, eleven thirty your time. And then and then Dean's like, okay, all right, let's go. We're ready. You guys ready? And then he goes, hold on, I got to restart. Then he goes away for twenty minutes. 14 minutes. And Kevin and I are just sitting here staring at each other. Kevin's like, why am I here? No, he's He's here because I want him to come on the show. I think he's funny. What? I'm a little late. It's not the end of the world. I'm busy. You know what I was busy with? I'm just making sure we're ready, that you're ready to go. I'm ready. Okay, good. I'm glad. I've never been more ready. I've been watching this guy on social media for the last few years, seeing him in the news. I'm like, I want to talk to that guy, but like for a long time, everybody's like, you can't platform people from, and I'm like, mm, I think it. we're past that. Although <laughs> I'm glad we ran the disclaimer at the beginning of the show. Well, we do that for shows where we don't have guests as we well. We do that because oh. of you. That largely, are we starting here today? L- largely are we because starting sour. Today? I'm trying to make Kevin feel more comfortable about well, the should. disclaimer at the beginning of the show. Now we run it for all of it. We run it for every single show. It doesn't matter we do. if we have a guest or not. It's just our way of saying, hey, we might do something stupid, so heads up. I don't think this is stupid, though. Excited to talk. No, to this I, I don't think this is stupid either. But you know what? And 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 Kevin actually made a good... Just, just, just bring him on. All right, ladies so, and gentlemen. Um, world we, should do, what? we should do a little bit of a, of a setup so that people know who this well, guy is. That's what I'm doing. Yeah, okay. I'll leave it. <laughs> I started to do the setup and you're like, you should do a setup. I'm like, e- let me get, I just, I'll do it. I'm a little agitated. I, I know all. you're agitated. I, it's because I, I fucked you over for 14 minutes and I'm really sorry today. 14? Yeah, maybe 15. 24. <laughs> Kevin and I were counting. Yeah, He's in should. Costa Rica. He's got a fucking pack. He's Ladies the, and gentlemen, he's on the lamb. He's got a. Well, he's I don't know if he's, you don't hideout. know that. I just know he's in Costa Rica. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, over the past four or five years, there have been some people who have rallied, railed against the things that they find unfair, whether or not we agree with them or not. Uh, your their reality might be different than our reality. All that other stuff that you're supposed to say before you do and interviews some, like this. Some people took it too far <laughs> and may have spent some time in jail. One of those people. Entertain the shit out of me. See, these are things I couldn't say during the pandemic, right? I'm like, this guy's fucking entertaining, <laughs> right? You see videos of him going I into did. like grocery stores, demanding like butter or something, and then getting mad, and then, and then you you know you get arrested in a parking lot. Well, I then think you, there might have been a get arrested f- at another place. There may have been a fist fight with somebody that was well, stalking we'll the, the vegetables. <laughs> we'll go through it. Uh, and then he did some time in jail, but he's. Undeter- he, he's one of those dudes it's like yeah go ahead and do what you want to him he'll pop up somewhere ladies and gentlemen one of Canada's great agitators please welcome to the program Mr. Kevin J. Johnson ladies and gentlemen wow Mr. Blundell um, this is a, a shock actually I want to say thank you for reaching out to me yeah. uh, because I was always aware of the fact that Dean Blundell that former radio dude wasn't really a fan of, of this guy here so um, <clears throat> I just want to say thanks very much for the opportunity to talk to you because I, I've uh, you know what? Go I've ahead. known who you are for a very long time. So this is uh, actually quite a pleasure. Okay. Uh, what do you mean? You've known who I am for a very long time. Go ahead. Where, you when did you first hear from me? The Dean Blundell show too, right? this Saturday. Like, you, you, your name was all over Toronto. Like Dean yeah. Blundell was synonymous with radio, synonymous with entertainment. 
Uh, and whatever the reasons are, you're not in radio anymore. It didn't make a difference. You still had a name. Uh, it, it's some of the names that we all knew in Toronto was yeah. the Humble and Fred show. Dean Blundell. Great guys. You know, yeah. These are the names that we knew. Mm-hmm. So, uh, uh, and, and I was also watching some of your social media during the, uh, the COVID bit. Cause I, I knew that there was some commentary that you'd made about myself that wasn't favorable towards myself. I don't take offense to that stuff, by the way, because it's all free advertising, no matter how you look at it. And I thought, you know what, let's watch Dean and see what Dean's going to do during this pandemic. And D- your approach was opposite mine. Uh, it makes neither one of us right nor wrong. I just thought that every single time that you said something about me, you were granting me access to a different audience that might have agreed with me, Poss- possibly not, but might have agreed with me. Maybe. Either way, this is the Dean Blundell show. I'm happy and you're here. To be here. You mean, dude, you made it. I'm really happy you're here too. I don't remember half of those things that you just said. You, they very may well have happened. I'm not here to debate those things. I'm here to get to I don't know even you. Care about the men. I don't yeah, care about exactly. them. All. Yeah, I mean, I mean, either everybody likes to move past it, right? You can everybody gets shit talk sometimes. You're in the heat of the pandemic. You had these government industries, different political parties just leaning on us, right? They're like leaning on you, they're leaning on me, all these other people. They, and I believe this to be true. This isn't even a joke. Locke and I talked about it in the podcast the other day, Kev, is that we were divided on purpose. We were literally pointed at each other like weapons, yeah. right? Would you agree with that? Would you kind of agree with that in terms of political politi- politicization of a, of a pandemic? Well, I would agree with the fact that the pandemic did exactly what it was supposed the fake pandemic. That's what I'm going to call it. Did oh, you don't believe it? You don't believe it was a real pandemic? No, not at all, because okay. there's still yet one shred of evidence to uh, to prove that there was. But it did do what it was meant to do. And that Which was, was? to buy think it was supposed to. Do we, you, oh, you think so? You so let's back up. So we're, we're all on the same page. Whether yeah, you believed it was a thing or not, it, it did divide us. Yeah, correct. Whether, yeah, okay, totally let's, do, let's say it that way. If it was real or not, it divided families. It divided uh, co-workers. Divided yeah. teammates on hockey and baseball teams. It divided everybody. Divided yes. Lachlan and I. We didn't talk for like two days once. It was Ooh, like two days okay. we didn't even communicate because you're like, I'm not. We're men. We're not chicks, shot. guys. What's going on there? Oh, hey, dude, there are a lot of really strong women. My girlfriend's like more of a dude than any one of us on this panel. I'll tell you that right now. More but listen, let me ask you something. So let's go back. Yeah. So because I'm fascinated by it. the whole COVID isn't real. Like you think it was fake for real? Like you think it, like how does that work in your mind? Do you think the the there's a good strategy? Point. Okay. Well, well I'm I'll, trying to figure it out. I'll cut right to the the science you, part. Absolutely. Well, no, you cut it. Well. See, and here's the thing. I will preface it by saying I am not a doctor and you are not a doctor. So Correct. I'm not going to cut to any science on this show. But if you do, let's do it with the caveat that you have how much medical training? Oh, zero. But I okay, have good, I'm an investigative good. journalist. So I spoke to go. those who did have medical training. That's okay. that was my job. And they so, said it was fake? The doctors that I trusted said it was fake. The Mayo Clinic and the Cleveland Clinic uh, also had zero evidence at the time. So here's really what happened, gentlemen, is... Um, the Ontario government's not a fan of me. I am extremely unpopular with uh, places like or uh, individuals like the Peel Regional Police Force. Why? Because I ran for mayor of Mississauga back in 2018. I placed second. I humiliated. You, you lived in Mississauga. Yeah, I grew up in Mississauga. Okay, so you grew up in Mississauga. Yes. And and your thing is that you think the the, the police in in Mississauga don't like you. You should see my because police you, file with them. It's all for talking. None well, you've of it's got, you, well, you, yeah. I, uh, it's just so, talking. so you okay? So you just been a you believe you've been a target of the police since 2018 for no reason. Since uh, I would say the uh, the end of 2016, maybe what I'll do okay. is backtrack a bit here, Dean. You should not know my name. All right, you should you shouldn't. What I should have been doing when I was raising my family was simply working full time somewhere. I went from the year 2000 to the year 2016, not being able to find full-time work. I put out more than 6,500 resumes. The 11 job interviews I did get, it was the same crap every time. Sorry, uh, sir, we're not hiring white males right now. We, we have diversity hiring uh, goals we have to meet, right? Really? So because of the color of my skin, I can't work. I just began ranting and raving about that on YouTube in December of 2016. And as a result, it turns out there was a lot of Canadian born men, white, black, whomever, but just Canadian born who are facing the same nonsense. My channel went from zero subscribers to 2 million in five months. That's so that's between December, 2016, May, 2007. YouTube was it YouTube. YouTube. I you was were making five swinging grand a week. A, five grand a five week. You were swinging a, a big YouTube dick back then, weren't you? Like, the, oh, dude, that's, that's not hard work. 
that's hard work. I mean, you know, I have a question. I'm much. sorry. And, and, and Please. first off, I just, I want to, I want to jump in here and just say quickly, um, Kevin is in Costa Rica. So his signal is a little bit um, dicey. So if you're watching this on video, you might not get a real clear picture of him. Yeah. Um, and if he drops off a little bit, it's just because, but I'm actually impressed with how strong the signal is. First off, okay. Kevin, what were you, 16 years, you couldn't get a job? Come on. Like, I mean, I, 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 like, I, I, let's be real. Garbage. Don't look. What were you, I, what were you trying to get? Guru. Marketing, you? search engine optimization, high end sales where there was a base pay, not just commission. These are things I was looking for. I, and some radio stations. I was trying were to. You, were you were you trying to shoot higher than you than maybe your resume suggested you you could actually you take? Shot, I like, would have. You know I would have settled. Would be like you get these these like delusions because I'm like that. Kev, you and I are the same, baby. I get these delusions of grandeur where I'm like, I could probably be the CEO of ChatGPT. I'm that smart. Nah, I was applying for most. I might be. Middle I'm, I might be the whitest man in Canada, and yeah. I have mm -hmm. been employed every waking moment since I was 12 years of age. Never had a problem getting a job, Kevin, because of the okay. the, the color of my skin. Where, where were where was all this being done? What province? What are you talking about? All he over. He was in was, Alberta, BC, Saskatchewan. Yeah. He was kind of all over the place. Well, yeah. My sincerest congratulations. I couldn't find work. And there was a lot of men that couldn't find work as well. The reason my YouTube channel blew up as, as much as it did in the first five months of its existence was that there were hundreds of thousands of men in the same position. They couldn't find meaningful work. I mean, I did some work cutting grass. That's ridiculous. I, I flipped burgers for a short while. These aren't full-time jobs. This is just junk to pass the time while I'm looking for something better. And it got to the point where I got so desperate looking for work, I even applied to the Canadian military to be a media liaison officer. And after I scored 100% on the aptitude test, they threw me out of the building because they said, you're never going to follow orders. Get the fuck out of here. That's what they said. I oh, was you scoring. were too. You're too smart for that. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Too smart, uh, too much of an independent thinker, whatever it might be. Mm. So lots so of maybe hold on, a, Kevin, Kevin, yeah. again, and, and I, I want to keep this light. And I'm yeah. fascinated by your story and I'm fascinated too. by the way your, your, your brain is wired, but, um, let, let, and, and, and I like to point out hypocrisy, my own, cause I'm very self-aware and That's other okay. people's as well. I, I, you know, and occasionally it will happen. Do you think maybe there's an issue with the interview process for you? <laughs> <laughs> what am I too handsome? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. To Lachlan's point, do you think do you, is is there an outside chance that you just you you, you seize up and like? I've never and... been asked to leave after I did an interview <laughs> and nailed even it. for a job I didn't get. No, I'm well, sorry, sir. You're going to need right. to leave the building. Right. It might was, have something to do with your approach <laughs> in the interview process. We don't know that. We don't know. I'm okay. totally Kevin's polite with the military friend. guys. They yeah, just didn't I'm, want I'm a free on, thinker. That's I'm on good. Kev's side here. Yeah. He got fucked over for 16 years. 16 he, years. Couldn't he was get too good job. for the jobs he was getting. Don't disagree with you, Kev. And uh, the jobs he could get uh, when they said, you're, you're, yeah, you can work here, but you're too smart. Probably something there too, right, Kev? Like, hey, listen, it's a burden being a genius. I know it. I know the Sometimes feeling. Sometimes it is. But look, guys, all I wanted to do was just work full time. Yeah. Leave in the morning, work full time, come home, be with my kids and family, you know, soccer practice, hockey practice, whatever. That's okay, so the life I'm getting I was a picture. For. You're getting mad yeah. because life is not working out the way it's supposed to work out. You're a great sales guy, great communicator. I believe on your website or on your Twitter handle, if I'm not mistaken, it says um, you're the best, Canada's best public speaker, Canada's best podcaster, yeah. but also Canada's most censored man. Right. Yeah, um, most and man, I can certainly confirm, but everything else would just be bluster. You know, okay. I, I also say I'm Canada's that's best looking self, man, but I'm not basing that's that self on aware. Anything. That's oh, self aware. That's self aware. Yeah. 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 I yeah. like that. So right, when you're that's, making that's your coffee in the morning, are you putting sugar in it or ego? <laughs> now he's Guys, just joking around about that. I part. drink it black. That's it. Boy. I'm changing yeah. nothing about my morning coffee. Okay. So, so I'm going to get to, I'm going to get to, yeah, I'm going to get to like, you know, the, the, the story of Kevin J. Johnson, but 2016 couple years, you're raging on, on YouTube, bunch of men identify with you. are like, yeah, we've been fucked over too, but you went off, which is your prerogative, dude, free speech. I'm a firm believer. Your opinion was you were getting, if I'm not mistaken, right. Is it, you were getting fucked over by diversity, equity, and inclusion hires. Uh, and Canadian jobs were being taken away from Canadian men like yourself. 
and that was your outlet where you were like, I need to do something about this. Two million people then sign up to follow you down that road of, yeah, we're getting fucked too. Is that correct? And that was really Precisely. the impetus for this version of Kevin J. Johnson, correct? Precisely. You nailed it. I got it. Not bad. There huh? How do you how do you like that? Yeah, how do you like you a very there popularized you. version of your life. And, right and I am the kind of guy, Dean, I'm not gonna get into fist fights, I'm not gonna lose my cool and throw stuff across the room. I right. took my frustration and channeled it into something. At least I thought it was positive. Yeah. Did you not? Were, did you not get arrested for a couple of altercations during COVID? Uh, one, two, well, uh, twenty-one times. Just a couple, but, but they they weren't <laughs> altercations. Uh, I'll, we'll cover some of those. Okay, but let's just get into it here. Uh, um, yeah. In in May of two thousand and seventeen, <clears throat> I had decided. <laughs> that I was going to take my newfound popularity and run for mayor of Mississauga for the second time, which I had done in 2014. Okay. Two weeks after I made that announcement, Bonnie Crombie, the, the, the then mayor had me arrested for a hate speech. And the only bail condition that was given to me is I couldn't speak to directly Bonnie Crombie or be around Bonnie Crombie. Now, what did she you say I, to get you arrested though? I don't, I don't remember that. We'll Google it. What I, did you say to get arrested that she I alleges you said? I cracked the Muslim joke. There was a video of a Muslim guy scrubbing his anus in a, uh, a public drinking fountain in Paris. And it's just me in the bottom right corner with sunglasses on cracking jokes as this guy's scrubbing, scrubbing, scrubbing. And then he drinks from the same hand. And I went, no, no, that's dysentery. No, we have a new epidemic coming. Like that's the kind of jokes I was cracking. And that's yeah, enough. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. I get it. You're cracking jokes, free speech, all that other stuff. It's uh, stereotypical racism, is what that is. That's what we call that in the business, right? Where you're like, hey, look at that dirty person. He's racist. And you're railing as part of your campaign. This is what I'm gathering, Kev. No. You're railing as part of your campaign against diversity, equity, and inclusion because you couldn't find a job. So it's going to come across as racist. Right, a little bit. Well, I got accused of that all the time. Well, sure. you've said a lot of a lot of things that could be considered racist. Do you think? Um, by weak-minded people, sure. Yes, I would agree with that statement. But by oh, anybody okay. who's a thinking person, no. Anybody with a higher intelligence right. quotient who understands I'm trying to make a point is not going to yeah. look at my point as racist. They'll look at it as either factual or satire. There's okay. there are two different ways that our society is looking at things right now, and the Kevin. ultra dumb are jumping on the bandwagon of He's racist. He's Islamophobic. He's homophobic. He's transphobic. He, uh, he's a hater. <laughs> so on. Yeah. Yeah, Kevin, yeah, yeah. I, the one thing that we've uh, touched on on this podcast occasionally is um, when you end up in waters where you're making it, where you're potentially saying something offensive, I think there's, there's people that are good at it. And then there's people that are think they might be good at it and aren't good at it and may get judged for how they're in how they're delivering that message. And, 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 and again, even people <laughs> that are good at it are still hauled out in the, in the, in the public eye and accused of whatever it is that they're railing against, whatever they're, whatever they're talking about. Like for instance, Chappelle or a Ricky Chavez or, uh, or anybody that, that tests the waters from a comedic perspective and says things that could be deemed offensive. Like if you just take a transcript of Ricky Gervais comedy special on Netflix and you read it and I read it out loud without the, without any inflection or, or any attempt at trying to be funny it could be deemed as very offensive because Bill Burr is another perfect example, but because they're great at what they do and they can negotiate those waters, you can step back if you're not a weak minded person or you're not trying to be offended and you could say, all right, that was an attempt at humor. I might not necessarily agree with it, but that guy made a really good point and it was kind of funny. Kevin, is there a chance that your attempt at satire might not, maybe you're not in the same. Maybe you don't have the satire field. gear. Yeah. Is that, is that fair to say? And it, it, and is that the reason why may, maybe some of your content on your YouTube page at the time would have been deemed as racist? 
delivery is going to be part of the issue with anything that is said. I mean, you can threaten to kill somebody with a big smile on your face and, you know, like just and make well, it actually, seem like you can't you're actually, even if right? you're smiling, it's I, I, I'm just saying that, but it would, the mood would be different is what I'm saying here. It would not I'd be, be very seriously. scared. Yeah. If someone right. threatened to kill me um, with a smile on their face, I'd take that more seriously than if they threatened to kill me with like a frown. Yeah, that would bother me more. <laughs> yeah. Like if someone came up to you, Kevin was like, I'm going to kill you. You'd be like, that guy's for that's sure going to kill me. But if that's some guy smile. comes up to me and he's like, I'm going to kill you. I'd be like, yeah, you don't mean that. <laughs> right. Very different. But anyway, mean, go ahead. I, I think I think the point that I'm making here is that in delivery, some people interpret my particular methodology of delivering information with the eyebrows going up and the smile on my face and, and the quick head movements. Some people are frightened by that and mostly women, let's call it what they are, and mostly very, very weak males on the far left side of things. Weak people will always look at somebody who delivers information like me or Chris Sky or Bill Burr. They'll they'll look at us. Um, I don't in, know if we should throw Bill Burr. No, no, let same. him do it. Let him do it. I love <laughs> I'm going to go yeah. ahead and do it anyway. Sure. Because I, I love Bill Burr and my delivery yeah. has at some points been as harsh. I'm as, sure Bill you know, will be I gotta just tell you something. I got to tell you something. Guys like me, George Clooney, Brad Pitt, same thing. We deal with the same We're issues. We're as good looking as they are. So, yeah. yeah. All right. Go ahead. All right. The point I want to make, though, is that uh, it's up to the individual to interpret what sure. they think the person's trying to do or trying to say. All right. Which is All right. I, I don't disagree with you, Kev. I don't disagree with you. Let's, let's, let's look at a couple of things. And listen, this is not gotcha. I just brought this up because yeah. I'm like, okay, let, let's look at some of the things that you said. And let's go through them and see oh, if they could go. have inter been interpreted differently. This is uh, 2022. Well, here, I'm not trying to hide former. anything there, eh? Racist <laughs> right. Calgary mayoral candidate. <laughs> yes, that's, CBC starts everything off that way. Everything. Yeah, that's oh, they definitely that think you're way. racist. So oh, hold on. We used over. racist last week. What are we going to use this week? Um, let's go they with don't have fringe. Else. <laughs> Kevin J. Johnson arrested in the U.S. after failing to show up for jail sentences in Ontario and Alberta. Did you go on the lamb, fella? I didn't know this. You get arrested I, in the I States. I remember this. I remember Racist that Racist former Calgary mayor's candidate, Kevin J. Johnson, arrested in the U.S. after failing to show up to a Toronto courthouse to begin serving an 18-month jail sentence. Okay, we'll get to that in a second. U.S. Customs and Border uh, told CBC Johnson was arrested Tuesday for illegal entry in the country. A person found, quote, wandering on foot. Was that you? Were you this wandering was, around We Montana? talked about this when he because he tried remember. to cross the border and then got stuck in a snowstorm. And Is wasn't there somebody that was supposed to pick you up and the car broke down or something, or they couldn't find you and they went back to the Motel Six or something? Like what was well, uh there, there's a whole bunch of questions in that one. So essentially, um they the 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 seventh attempt on my life was enough for me to say, you know, this this Canada thing's not really working out for me. Who tried I, to kill I've you? Had, yeah, it's like, oh yeah, the last one was quite serious. They um, they came at me with hammers and a baseball bat. I split. And the only reason I got away from the uh, the crowd that who, was trying to who do who as came much damage, after, who came after you, Kevin? Sorry, probably the Antifa clowns that were always coming after me during the last couple of uh, okay. So do you, but you know who the? Do you have any? And you get video with this? No. When someone's you know. wearing no, look. When someone's wearing a mask, you run. You don't know who they are. What or I can tell you though is, is that one of my friends screwed up. And she let everybody know accidentally where I was living in Calgary, which I told everyone, if you're coming over, your mouth is shut. Yeah. So Antifa got their hands on the actual pin, the, the Google pin as to where I was or someone who's affiliated with them. Those and tricky bastards. A few days before Christmas of uh, 2021, that is when the guy says, hey, Johnston. And two guys came busting through the, uh, the fence with hammers. Now, the fence was really flimsy. I was renting a house from uh, Pastor Archer Pavlovsky at the time. I split. I went across the road, hopped the Jesus. fence, and there was more than waiting for me. I made a right turn. And the only reason I got away, Dean, is because You're there was faster. a hole in the fence. No, oh. not because I was faster. There was a hole in the fence that I knew about that they didn't. And I just went straight through, you, rolled, just like gone. Just Millennium Sneaky Falcon in, in Star gone. Wars uh, Return of the Jedi, Kevin, where you're like right into that, the mouth of the worm, right? Yeah, Kevin, there's a lot of holes here. Uh, let's just no, try to no, just one. wait. Why, just why wait. is Antifa I'm not after done. you? Brooklyn. Yeah. Okay. Brooklyn, I'm not done. Hold on. I'm not done. It gets like, more violent. Well, no, no. It's just that that was the 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 attempt, the last one for me. I'd had enough. I truly had yeah. had enough of all the attacks. Okay. Like, they trashed my car. They lit Pastor Art's uh, uh, garage on fire, knowing that I lived. 
two doors down from this guy. I think he lit uh, that on purpose. I think he did that. I so. so. I've, I've known the guy a long time. Not a chance. Sorry. They, they stole a lot of my stuff. They stole my signs. I was attacked by Antifa live on Facebook. The cops let them go. All kinds of crazy crap had been going on, really. So I just, I'd had enough. I said, you know what? This kind of thing, it's not going to work for me. Uh, so I, I made an attempt to acquire asylum in the United States. It's just that, unfortunately, the night that I picked to cross the border was oh. the coldest freaking night on record in that area. It went down to minus 48 Celsius. So I'm thinking, I, this sucks. <laughs> But I'm up to it, um, and I buried myself in the snow and just waited for the sun to come up. And as soon as the sun came up, the temperature went right up to about 10 degrees Celsius. I started making my way towards the uh, towards the small town that I was planning to go to and then put forward my application. There were you, you go. Were you, were you cold? Yeah, it sucked. Did the United, <laughs> did the United States take you? Well, um, the border patrol had picked me up. I'll tell you why, because <laughs> there, there was oh, a God. set number of women who were expecting me and they panicked. I said, look, I want to be an American or I want to be dead. Just leave me to die. That's yeah. the decision I've made. They ignored me. And they as said, one does, he's, he's looking around, he's cold, go get him. So they were looking yeah. for me. Uh, and that's what do you mean? Hold it. Women back in Alberta that were worried no, about you. Women in the United States. Women in the United oh, you States. had some, did you, did you like you hook, you had a couple of hookups down there that you were like yeah, ready we'll to go hook up with a couple of ladies. Is that the deal? You had a, like a harem of women waiting. Very for nice. Was it Tinder or Blundell? <laughs> <laughs> Was it hinge? Did, were very you nice. on hinge? I'm saying very nice ladies. That's all I'm saying. Okay. So, so you, no. you, 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 you say to yourself, if I'm going to understand this correctly, right? I'm leaving Canada because Antifa wants to kill me. Antifa's after Antifa. you with bats and you're jumping through holes and fences and shit. And you're like, that's the last time that happens. Guys in ski masks. Sorry. No, <laughs> so you go, mask. you decide all that oh, lower no. face crap that they wear. Is no one. Oh, has you, oh, you just meant like a, like a, ma so you had at least responsible murderers at your house that decided they didn't want to be sick, which is nice. So anyway, they, they were, <laughs> no man, those, those are great story. Your, your face from the bottom. You yeah, know, the necker it. that pulls over. Yeah, it's a dicky. Oh, Kevin, yeah. they didn't want to give you COVID. They didn't. Yeah, they were. They took it seriously. Well, they believed in it, so sure, I guess. How long were yeah. were the bats? Were they long enough for social no. distancing? Do no, no, no. no. Short like, stuff. Were the hammers on sticks? So they like uh, we're not getting that close. Construction hammers. I think the ones you right. buy for twelve ninety nine at Home Depot. Yeah, a really good one. Like a husky is like 40 bucks. But anyway, so, okay, so let me get this straight. You decide I've had enough threats on my life. Take your word for it. Uh, guys in ski mask hammers, I'm leaving. You devise a plan. Before you go, you tell some ladies on some dating apps that are on the other side of the border in some small town in Montana sure. that you're coming and you're going to be part of the United States because you're uh, seeking political asylum. Uh, and you, when you don't show up because you're you're in a snowbank, it's from what I understand, when you don't show up, then that's when they put out the APB, the all points bullet and saying, hey, our friend Kevin's wandering around and the police then pick you up as you were wandering around this small border town and border, border, border patrol, patrol picked you up. OK, am I am I on the money there? No, everything except the dating app. Sure. Oh, OK. So you just you, this wasn't a dating. I, I'm just asking. That wasn't a dating app. You're just women no, that you know. The, that These are individuals that I've known for a very long time, not naming anybody, but. A very very long time. Is it sexual? They're, 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 oh, hang on. I want to know. I want to know if he's got a hook from up Canada. Is he is a sexual it's, in nature? Well, the idea was to actually get into a car and then head down to the the nearest courthouse and put forward the application. That's what it was all about. It wasn't about oh. hiding in the United States. It was to actually put forward the application. That's so what it was all go? about. Yeah. How what did happened? Go? Well, it didn't go very well because when the border guards had me in their office, I kept saying, "Gentlemen, my life's in danger. You guys know you can't send someone back whose life is literally in danger." So they look me up and they're going, holy smoke, you're this guy. So it turns out that they knew who I was based on all the media from Alberta that got down to Montana. They had no idea what to do. So these guys, they just said, here, have a seat. Here's some blankets. Here's a couple of burritos, so like frozen garbage burritos. But yeah, oh, oh yeah, oh, I even got a, a can of Diet Coke. Thank you very much for that. And they're on the phone for three hours, not knowing what to do. Like, what do we do with this guy? He wants asylum. Like, what do we do? Sure. What do we do? Many people try to escape Canada, Kevin. Well, well yeah, it's be so weird, right? Like if you're a border patrol officer, everybody's trying to get into this country and you got a guy from this country going, let me out. Like, and they're probably looking at you like, are you serious? Can we just take your place? We'll go back. 
Hey, Mr. Little I'll, time. I, go. You guys think it's so great? Go. I would have so, definitely traded it. Okay. So they pick you up, send you back. Essentially, yes. Uh, without an actual hearing. Uh, and they refuse to take the. Uh, yeah, you're an illegal alien. I have a big, I have a firm opinion on like uh, I illegal immigration that if you come into a country illegally, you should be sent back immediately. So that's what happened to you. And Border oh, Patrol sends you back. Yeah, that's what they did. So you go back to Calgary. You serve 18 months in prison. Is that correct? No, 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 no. I go back. They actually they dropped me off at the Saskatchewan border. Uh, and the, the Border Patrol said, uh, do you have any warrants for your arrest? I said, yeah, check. Check Alberta. There's got to be something there. I'm sure. I I I was podcasting until a couple of days ago, and it turns out that there was a uh, a warrant, a provincial warrant in uh, in Alberta. So the RCMP drives me to the Saskatchewan prison. That one is horrible. It should not exist. Oh God, it's a bad place. At which point they then decide to drive me to Medicine Hat, where the sheriff's department picks me up. Um, and one of them said, Oh, Mr. Johnson, I can't believe this. I watch your show all the time. Oh, <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. We celebrity made in lockup is he's thinking we, we, to himself. We, we made I a do? stop at McDonald's for coffee. Um, nice. I got bathroom breaks whenever I wanted them. They actually didn't even bring out the, the cage truck. I got to sit in a seat in an actual, uh, suburban. What Whoa. an incredible experience, right? Wow. Get to ride an SUV and everything. Yeah. So uh, what had happened there is they they locked me up for an additional uh, I think it was twelve days, um, and then I had my bail hearing. Yeah, um, yeah, this the bail hearing, um, and in there I got released into my friend's custody, where I had to endure three months of house arrest during the truckers convoy in Ontario, which I really wanted to go to, but mm. um, every second or third day, Edmonton oh. cops would oh. come by oh. and ring the doorbell, make sure I was there, you know. Like, Mr. Yeah. Johnson, you can't be outside having fun. Don't you dare. So. Well, house arrest for like skipping out on like a, uh, you know, jail is they take it fairly seriously. So I, I mean, you just accepted it. You're like, I can't go to the big party in Ottawa, right? I can't go to you know, honk a horn and stuff. So you just accepted yeah, it listen, like a man. I couldn't even be on the internet. So yeah, well. my show, my podcast at the time was still running five days a week. I yeah. had to pick up a static landline and Hey guys, Kevin J. Johnston here. This is the Kevin yeah. J. Johnston show. Like from a telephone. I so, couldn't be online. Okay. Okay. So so you you when do you go to jail? When do yeah. I go to jail? Yeah, and, like and that's what I'm trying and, to get at. And, like you, you you're taking me through the minutia of the experience, like Saskatchewan, sure. Medicine Hat. I want to know how jail was. And is it okay. is, is, is first time FIFA still chasing you? Yeah, where are they now? Uh well, they've pretty much disbanded now. Like in Alberta, they're they're non existent. No one's paying them anymore. Hey, Locke, that's the thing, right? That's your new gig. You can start Antifa up in Antifa. Alberta. There's a huge gap right well, now. Well, someone's got to start the forest fires. Yeah, go ahead. So you, that, that's uh, what but they, there's no political reason for them. Like they're they're not trying to stop me or uh, Pastor Derek Reimer or Pastor Arthur Pavlovsky from running for office anymore. So they've well, been. I think Artie's got his own issues there too, right? Like um, he's been married forty years and his wife's like fifty two or something like that. So you know, you might want to look yeah, into that. But anyway, let's. Yeah, no, no, yeah, he's a year younger than I am, and his wife is two years younger than him. Just I know the family. That. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> anyway, um, so he, you go to jail when? I go so the um the first time in Alberta. Yeah. I went to prison, uh, for seven weeks during the mayor run. I pulled what? number one in the Calgary mayor race. They couldn't have that, of course, because I was promising to put the whole city back to work to get rid of the mask mandates, uh, to get rid of social distancing and to arrest all the key brass who work for Alberta Health Services who forced this nonsense on us in the first place. Yep. So that's when they arrested me was two hours after that poll came out uh, and I was gone for seven weeks. And there's no there's no reason other than you scored favorably in a poll in a mayor's race and that's why you went to jail. My disclosure is hilarious. They went looking through every single video I had ever produced, which at the time was over 5,000. They were looking for sedition, traitor callings, intimidation, uh, call, counseling to a crime. They looked for everything and they couldn't find it. In fact, the RCMP came back saying Johnston is no threat. So they got me on causing a disturbance for not wearing a mask. Uh, so I just, so seven I'm weeks familiar with, for not I'm familiar wearing with a mask. That. Yeah, that. I'm familiar with that story. Uh, you never pulled any higher than second last in the Calgary mayor's race from the time of your, it was a, it was so, an independent poll. Oh, it was released. Different okay? poll. Good. It was a, it was, it was released by a Christian group that I didn't know. 
I had no idea who they were. Well, you were just very I mean, happy they believe in Noah's Ark. Are we really going to take any? I don't care. About present day I don't reality? care. Seriously. Obviously, Dean, it was taken seriously enough for them to come and get me. Well, or I'm just throwing this out there as like a little trial balloon. Or maybe your story is inaccurate about what it is that you got arrested for. And maybe you got arrested for jumping bail. Maybe that no, was ca it. causing a disturbance in May of 2017. Sure. It was causing a disturbance. Well, that was how they, that's how they got me out of the campaign. All right. For All right. So weeks. when do you go to jail though? Like give, give me the jail stuff. I want well, the that's, jail that stuff. was the jail. Well, he, that was jail. He, he, that was prison. But, but this wasn't during COVID. Yes, it no. was. It was oh, 20, okay. So uh, yeah. All right. Uh, the, the timeline's a little crazy, but uh, yeah. it's so, okay. 2021. Let's get back sure. on track here. So now you're May running, you get out of jail. I'm running for mayor. Okay. Here, look guys, I'll simplify it. I'm running for mayor of Calgary, May, 2021. I yeah. get arrested. All right. I started running in February. They arrest me in May. They hold me till the first week of July. Yeah. But you're and still then, beaking off getting in fights at no frills and shit. Like you got arrested at a, at a fight at a fucking grocery store. Dude, you got to include all of it. Like, you can tell a story here. I'll let that, you tell your story. I'll be super April. nice. That was April of 2021. Whatever. Uh, hey, you guys want to hear the story? I'll no, tell you the story. Dude, I saw it. No, I watched you go in and bait people at a grocery store. Listen, I will. I love I these so. conversations. I really do. I so. But you're going to have to include all of it, right? Like, you Fine. can't. You, you can't let's just go back invent to these ideas or invent. Hey, let's like, go back to April. Back to April. Back to April, Kevin. April 2021. I get invited to speak in Dawson Creek. British Columbia. We packed everything except soap. I said, you know, gentlemen, I am not under any circumstances going to share bars of soap with you. So we went to a no frills run by some guy named Dave. Uh, we walked Dave's in. I'm no not going to wear a mask. Yeah, they name it after the guy all the time. Dave That's from awesome. no frills. That's him. Dave's no frills. Sure. Uh, and I buy a two pack of Irish spring soap. Um, the cashiers say, well, we're not going to serve you because you got a mask. One of the cashiers assaults me, punches me. I said, yeah, no, I'm not doing this. I just put a $5 bill down on a $2 bar of soap. And as I'm walking out the door, this Dave guy, he hits me, pokes me right in the chest. And then we said, yeah, whatever, I'm leaving. And as we leave, Dave comes out looking for trouble. And when I had my cell phone up filming his face, he turns around and slaps my hand. So I gave him that. I used the minimal amount of force necessary to end Dave's second assault of me. That's all that it was. But the RCMP officer that comes in, uh, he came in shouting and screaming at the top of his lungs, you're under arrest, get in the car, put your hands, man, you're mad. Well, Did he talk like just, that? Oh, well, that, to me, that's what it sounded like. You guys all can right. see the video. He shouts the whole way through the video. It's I'm on YouTube. Bring it up here. It's all free yeah. to watch. I'm going to bring it up here. Yeah, I'm gonna Please, bring it up. Then if you notice... He was so bad, this RCMP officer was so bad at doing his job that when he handcuffed me, I was still holding on to the, uh, the bars of soap. And I had to throw the bars of soap with my hands cuffed behind my back saying, guys, take my soap. I, I'm not giving the soap away. So I got, uh, I got a night in prison for that. I made bail the next day. And then I guess about, about a year ago, the charge got, uh, got turfed. So here's a question he I would ask you. Here's a question. I want to get to the second. Uh, we'll get to the video in a second. Here's a question I would ask you. What I've gathered so far from all the stories of Kevin J. Johnson's experience over the past several years mm -hmm. is that you've done absolutely nothing wrong and have, des have deserved none of the things that have happened to you and you've been well, targeted, right? I have done something wrong from the left-wing perspective. That nope. is something. No, 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 no. The left-wing does not run the judicial in this country. Sure yep. they do. Mm, no, they don't. I've had over, over 380 court appearances in the last... Uh, seven years i can tell you it's extremely far left well i am not a, a fan second. of it at all so you know of course i wouldn't either if i've been arrested 380 times or whatever it was well, um, those are court appearances but yeah, yeah but like so i'm a big fan of this thing called self-awareness or personal responsibility right i, I don't like really? getting arrested i'm not a, not a big fan of getting arrested i also love it when people explore their own reason cho reason choice it's called so in the big picture you've encapsulated eight years of legal issues you've been going through that arise from anger and emotion, right? Frustration, Where, not anger, but yeah, frustration. Frustration. Frustration stems from anger. Like we can go through the actual psychology of your mind if you like, but we'll do it off air. Is that you have, for all rights, tough time getting a job, life sucks, 16 years, can't find one, do a YouTube channel. You become somewhat somewhat of a celebrity, a provocateur. 
people start donating to you. A lot of GoFundMe's there, right? You're like, okay, great. I'm on the drip. I get it. I do. It's the same for everybody in this industry. So take no, no, uh, I'm not, I'm not insulting you. Yeah. And, uh, the more you escalate, right. You connect with groups of people, the more, you know, maybe some of the money you make and stuff like that. You're now in Calgary, as you pointed out, and you're making a point of, I like to call it and then dude, like we all do this, put your thumb in the eye of the idea. And your idea is that you don't want to wear a mask, right? You are anti-mask aside from being accused of being racist. You're anti-mask, anti-vax. You think it's all fake. So you you spent a lot of time and money, and you had a team, a multimedia team, right, to build the Kevin J. Johnson brand. And the brand was thumb in the eye of anybody. Personal choice is my own business. F you. I'm allowed to say what I want, do what I want. And to me, it sounds like you got caught up in the vortex of that. This is just from the outsider's perspective. And it sure. came from a series of things that you did. So we've all curated our own impression of what Kevin J. Johnson is. And it's becoming more clear to me as I talk to you. And I'm really enjoying this conversation, to be honest with you, um, because we're getting to. I'm a little what frustrated. You're, what you're, <laughs> That's OK. You're allowed to be. <laughs> it's, what your it's frustration somewhat is. disjointed. And the frustration that I hear coming from you is, is that you're not allowed to have things that are nice. You're not allowed to be a, a, a Canadian man that works. And so this is a full on resentment theater. Here's the video from you at no frills. This is what you got arrested for to your point. Let's watch it together. Okay. So this is me putting the camera in the guy's face. Yeah. This is Dave coming is, out. You know, you know, so, so far, right. So far you yeah. got your camera in the guy's face. Not a lot of people like that. I'm a big fan of not doing that to people, but whatever. Let's let's do that. I don't. So but I was not going to touch this guy. No, but you went into the the, the no frills and caused the scene on purpose without a mask, smoke. right? Yep. There well, we go. I paid for soap. I didn't get my three dollars change back. Okay. Uh, okay. There you go. And so there's your soap. He wants you to get the hand. Oh no. So now here's the thing. Let's go back here. That's let's not a punch, guys. I don't that's think it's a punch, Kev. No, I, dude. I've been punched before. That's not that's a punch. Not a punch. No, he's trying I, to get your phone I know out what of the, the hand. Law is. The and then law you punch is, I have to use the minimal amount of force possible to end his assault on me. That's it. That wasn't an the assault. He grabbed amount. your phone. He didn't punch you. So that no, was the same. Like, this is why me. I like having these being, conversations. No, hang on. If I was well, holding I on having these conversations, because you, you just told hand. me that he punched you and started the whole thing and no, you got I arrested. Said, no, I said slap the phone in my hand. I didn't say punch me. Oh, okay. Well, he slapped the phone out of your hand, but you got the phone in his face. That's a I personal think, I think you issue. said you got one of these on the way out. The... Okay. Yeah, I didn't so see I that either. I got a poke in the chest like that. Two yeah. fingers. Okay. All right. Okay. So that's the first time you go to jail? No. Mm, no. Okay. Second, I think. And then Second? when? Did, how long have you spent in jail? When did you get out? That, that was one night. I was out the next day because uh, my lawyer made a really good uh, bail argument for me. Uh, actually, you know what was funny about that bail hearing? Uh, it was all done by phone, and uh, the Crown Attorney was trying to get me banned from the province of British Columbia until the trial could be heard, which, of course, is outside of charter rights. I couldn't believe the crazy stuff he was asking for. Yeah. So the bail condition was, don't talk to Dave, don't go to Dave's store. I thought, you know what? Okay, I won't talk to Dave. <laughs> I'm not going to go to Dave's store. I promise. I, I swear I'm not going. Yeah. Um, and then that one was up in the air for, I guess, two and a half years because that courthouse obviously had been very busy. They couldn't get uh, any hearings done. And then they realized they didn't want me back in their town. So they just let it all go, which was fantastic. Well, can, yeah, because everywhere you go, you do a scene, right? You go you go somewhere and you do a scene and you record well, you're gonna it make you put me it up to a and you're like, I'm fighting for you. Stupid. I'm going to make a scene. You're damn right. Well, of course I you did. Okay. Of course you did. And, and they kept but telling you to we're, stop. We're, and you kept we're doing getting it. into a bit of a circular conversation here oh, based on the fact yeah, no, no, but uh, hold I'm, on. I'm loving it too. It's I, Dean Blondell, like, everybody. No, I know, I know. And listen, we're excited to have you, Kevin. But let's get to the point where you're actually running for mayor. Okay. So right. now you're running for mayor, you're making signs, you're out, you're and and that is after this. This is this is now spring 2021. You spend your night in jail. You can't talk talk to Dave anymore. Now you're gonna run to be the leader of Calgary. My application to run for leader of Calgary was about two months before that Dave incident. I signed okay. up in February of 2021. Okay. So I was running for office when all this was going on. This whole thing, because my entire campaign was wrapped around 
getting rid of all the COVID mandates in Calgary, yeah. making Calgary's economy number one in the country because everybody was going to go back to work. That was my campaign. So obviously when there was an opportunity to discuss these, these masking uh, policies, the COVID policies, uh, all the policies brought forward about social distancing and so on, naturally I was dead set against all of that, mainly because yeah. nobody had ever proven at all that something was really going on. I, I filled out 105 FOI forms to every medical agency in Canada What's and that, not sorry? one response. Freedom of Information. Yeah. Okay. Freedom of Information right. Act forms, which they only get 30 days to reply. Is there, is there a chance though, Kevin, that there, there may have been some question marks about COVID because there was a lack of understanding about the impact it would have on, on not just in Canada, but around the world? Can I? Okay, I'm going to answer that question by telling you something very simple. Okay. I went to the Trillium Hospital in Mississauga when this COVID thing started. Uh, and there's ambulances parked on like all kinds of angles. The doors were open. The sirens are on. We've never seen that before. That level of incompetence is not possible in our modern era. So we looked inside with the cameras running. They're all empty. We went right inside the hospital. Empty. Nobody was in the emergency room at all. And eventually the security guards caught on to who I was. So they blocked me from going any deeper into the hospital. We proved the hospital was empty. So the response that we got from Trillium uh, Healthcare was to ban me from all the Mississauga hospitals. Well, can I, can I, I yeah, let me, healthcare. let me just pop in there. Um, yeah, is, is that it was, I believe later proven, if I'm not mistaken, that the video that you recorded was not a pandemic related video. And you misrepresented. Uh, that's what I've heard. I could be wrong. We're, okay, we're throwing around a bunch of days today. Uh, like, hey, dude, I could be wrong. <laughs> but I've, I've kind of caught you in a couple of little stories where you're not including, you know, proper information. So that's what I'm trying to get at. Okay. Um, well, that and was to, in Mississauga at Queensway and Highway 10. That was during okay. the pandemic. All right, kids. But listen, but, but 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 your video in a hospital and some ambulance, a, a video of an ambulance is is not infectious disease research. No, right. that's me proving that the hospitals were empty when CBC went ahead and said that the hospitals were full and everybody was on ventilators and the lineups were around the corner. There was nobody in the hospital. So I debunked okay. everything that CTV and CBC had to say. Everything? That's what that did was you debunk about. everything? Or uh, yeah. did you create, did you use some creative video to suggest that the COVID was oh, a hoax? When you no go live hospital. on Facebook, you can't really edit. You, like there's no such thing as oh, editing video live okay. on Facebook. All right. So Kevin, <laughs> you know, Kevin, now... <laughs> <laughs> and I, I have a question a little bit about your, like your, your, your wiring, right? Cause I okay. mean, we, I think we got a good sense of who you are. Yeah. Um, do you, do you feel like you have been put on the, on, on, on the planet to like, do you have like a martyr complex or do you think you need to be here for everyone's protection? Like, do you have, do you wake up every morning with some sort of mission to, to uh to to save us all from ourselves that would or... be extremely egocentric of me okay and I, I, for me like you're you're almost talking about do i have a god complex or a savior complex yeah, and the answer, no no okay, absolutely right. not but it's a fair but question say, it's a fair yeah. question but i'm also going to answer it properly no i don't have that complex it's not my job to to rescue you two gentlemen from anything nor okay. anybody else but oh when there is a massive injustice that is going to affect me my children's future society that I live in and so on. Of course, I'm going to look into it. And of course, yeah, I'm okay. going to help out where I can. Oh, okay. Dude, but, he's, but, he's, but he's just, he's, just but, he's like a sentinel. You know what he is? Uh, Kevin's like I, one I, of those conspiracy sentinels where he's like, and, and I don't for this. Okay. So Somebody, let's jump up. Let's yeah. just jump up. Uh, like, let's just take a couple of steps ahead of, uh, of the, of, I don't think we really need to worry about filling in all the gaps here, but now you're in Costa Rica. Okay. And you're essentially, living outside of Canada because wh why are you there? Is there a reason why you're in Costa Rica? I'll uh, answer that back. question. I'll answer the question. If you gentlemen, let me answer it in its entirety. Would that be okay? Yes. Okay. No, yeah. Okay. okay. But hold it though, no. dude, you can't take us on some kind of wacky no. goose chase here no, again. It's not wacky yeah. at all. It's okay. not wacky at all. Not one bit. Okay. Just After yes or no answers first. Let me just ask a few yes or no answers and then get to Lachlan's more drawn out questions. So I, I just got a couple questions because we're going to be here for a bit. I hope no, not really. It's a short story. Go ahead. Okay. Did you move out of Canada to Costa Rica for legal reasons? Yes or no? no. Okay. No. Did you move to Costa Rica for financial reasons? Yes. Okay. Did you that's, move that's, to yeah, Costa 100%. Rica? Okay. 
did you move to Co- did you have to pay someone to get you down to Costa Rica or did you go there legally? I got on an airplane with permission and bought it. I would, but you bought it the same way anybody would buy a ticket, fly, land, done. Right. That's, a, that's, that's it. That's yeah, hundred and forty five dollars. We'll look into, we'll look into that one, later. One, one, one more question. One more question. Would if you came back, would you be in any legal trouble in Canada? Did you leave anything un, unattended to legally in Canada uh, before you left? Well, the province of Ontario, they want me to go and rot for 18 months in prison for contempt of court, but that's on appeal right now. Okay. okay now okay. we're getting somewhere. Kevin, this yeah. is exciting. I'm excited. Now, you're honest. Thank now, you. why are you in Costa Rica? Give us give, give us your reason. Yeah. <clears throat> you promised. He's wanted in jail. Yeah, I, I promise, <laughs> Kevin. I, okay, good. Promise. So after um, the the mayor bit, after the the podcast that we were doing in 2021 with COVID and me running for mayor, it was huge. The numbers were off the charts, huge. There's a massive amount of money coming in and so on. The government didn't like that, obviously. So after the campaign was done, I got an additional 40 days of prison time, then 15, then 12, then house arrest, then fines, then they took my car, then they locked all my bank accounts up. So like I'm, I'm scratching my head thinking, well, what the hell am I going to do with my time? I love Calgary. I love the city of Calgary. And I had this little studio space that might have been 15 by 10. And I would get in front of the computer and I realized, you know, I can't do anything here. There's no money here. I can't get a job here. Like people see me and they go, oh yeah, Kevin, I voted for you. But you know, you can't work here. That nonsense. So I, I it, it finally hits me. If I want to work and make money, and utilize my skill set for something that actually benefits me and my my family, my family's future. I can't be in Canada. No. So I I had also at that time been looking at places like Florida, Texas, Barbados, uh, Panama, looking for places that might. Be- Did you look into Russia, Pyongyang, North Korea? No, hell no. <laughs> well, Russia I would go to for a vacation, but uh, Pyongyang, mm. hell no. Brother. You know what? Do it. Go to Russia for vacation. I want to dig into your your trip down there. So, are you a landed immigrant in Costa Rica, or are you? Yeah, there? How long have you been there? Yeah, I've been here five months. Five months. Oh, okay. Yeah, five you months. Plan on coming back, or you plan on becoming? A, I don't and, know. And are you, you don't know. I, I really don't know. I, I mean, like, I just when you have I a job down head, there. I am doing relocation for people here. I'm, I'm helping people who want to move to Costa Rica or Panama or yeah. Mexico get that done. So while I got down here, here's the good news about Costa Rica. There's a lot. Like of you don't have to, you don't have to S N E D at a gas station or anything for money, do you? Like you can, you can, you can, you've got a legitimate way to make it, it some kind of income down there, correct? Yes. Okay, good. I'm just checking. Yeah, absolutely, okay. absolutely. Okay, yes. Okay. So, um, well, uh, while I was helping people move their finances and whatnot here to Costa Rica, getting properties bought because Costa Rica is the place to buy on the West Coast, not the East Coast. The West Coast for for making profit on your property. Uh, it turns out that a lot of people who watch my podcast were also having a great deal of difficulty with the Canada Revenue Agency. Now, I'm guys, I'm telling you, man, they're all saying like, what do I do? I got these threatening letters. So I just started saying, send me your letter. Let me see it. And it turns out, Dean, that these letters that the CRA are sending to people <laughs> yeah. are written by AI. And everyone, like... Over 300 people have sent me these threatening letters. AI is telling everybody in Canada, you owe between 50 and $56,000. It's it's those magical numbers in there. I'm thinking, okay, 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 so okay. So not only, Dean, am I helping people move to Costa Rica, mm-hmm. but I'm helping them get rid of their tax debts too. Mm-hmm. And I'm doing it from here where there's no license required to do what I'm doing. Wow, but we, it I, works out then. Incredibly well. Okay, and, so, so, okay, and go, there's no censorship ahead. here. Right. Mm. So since I got to Costa Rica, yeah. I went from 18,000 followers on Instagram to almost 67,000 today. Congratulations. It's just because there's no, um, no yeah. one's blocking IP addresses. Okay. You can, okay. okay. So, so let me, let me just, I, I do want to, I want to pop back. There's a lot to unpack here. Yeah. There is a, there's a lot to unpack. I've, I've, I've written a couple of things. No. There's a lot to unpack. It's that a, was my so, next question. Was it worth it? Like, like, From a knowledge standpoint, from what I know compared to what the average man knows, that was worth it. Um, You're smarter where, than me now, for sure. Guaranteed. <laughs> well, Guaranteed. Not quite what I'm all the, all the Costa Rican stuff, you know, and, and, and feeding into it, was it worth it to Lachlan's question? Another question I would buttress that with. 
not everything in life is worth it, gentlemen. I mean, there are well, some things in that just weren't worth it. But yeah. at the no, same no, time, no. would I would I have known that at the uh, at the time? But even though some things I did, they weren't profitable. They may not have been worth it from a financial standpoint. They were worth no. it from a knowledge standpoint. Okay, so like, fair that, enough. I, so I don't I mean, regret I mean, any of that based on what I now know. Okay, so learning experience aside, what it sounds like you do, it sounds like you got on a flight to Costa Rica and you stayed, and you're helping other people like you that have similar issues in Canada, whether they be cultural issues, or in your case, you believe it's a political issue, or in a lot of people's cases, tax issues? Is that correct? Mostly financial. Mostly financial. Okay, so you're helping people dodge taxes and move to a different country. Eliminate taxes legally and move to another country. <laughs> did, did you? Are you? Are you? It's all in the wording. It's all coming now, up. hold on. Let, listen, I I rail against the the increased cost of living here in Canada all the time, and I'm shocked by uh, like I'm shocked by people's defense of every increase, right? And 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 I'm the, the reason why I'm shocked is because Canada it we're taxed like crazy and and it's getting more and more difficult to live and we're getting more and more homeless and you know what listen and everybody goes it's only 3 cents on the dollar like I I love those conversations. Uh, and the one I really love is but we're giving you a rebate. We're taking it and we're giving it back to you. It drives me absolutely yeah. insane. So I'm not a tax guy. I'm not the guy that's sitting here going we have to pay tax but we do have a country that is quite nice to live in from my perspective. So I will pay my share. I just think that we got to do something to stop the spending, stop the like, cause we every day Trudeau's on the TV right now and he's, there's a billion dollars for this. And every time he says it, I'm like, ah, oh, our taxes are going to continue to go up and they're, they go up right. at every level. So. Did you, pay taxes when you lived in Ca Canada, Kevin, or did you try to find ways to avoid paying taxes? How honest would you like me to be on that one? Okay. Very, well, well, you're in Costa Rica. No one can enough. get you. So let that's, it all out. It wouldn't matter enough. anyway, gentlemen, because I've told this story before in Canada. Hit it. In the year 2000, I spent four months trying to culminate all my paperwork to get my taxes done. And I still owed the money. And I was scratching my head thinking, wait a minute, hold on. Nobody paid me for the 20 hours per week for four months for my time to get this stuff done. And nobody paid me to get this paperwork done. Then I paid you your taxes, an accountant dude. and then I still yeah. owed the money according yeah. to them. So Dean, I sent, I sent them a letter, a registered letter with my social insurance card telling them that I am returning this to you because I can find no evidence of a signature I have uh, placed on a contract you've put before me. You have exactly 90 days to return this card to me and prove to me that I must pay taxes or I will discontinue reporting for the rest of my life. They did not reply, and I stopped reporting in Are the you year Freeman? 2001. Are you a Freeman? Right? Oh, God, no. those guys are idiots. No. <laughs> those guys are idiots, but they all... <laughs> No, no, I, no, those guys, they, they do stupid stuff like take over houses that aren't... These guys are morons. That's ridiculous, yeah, but can, can I ask you another question? Um, yeah. And again, listen, I, uh, this is not a judgment question have you sure. ever been diagnosed with anything like any kind of uh... i was once court ordered to go and see a psycho a psychiatrist okay and we sat in his office and after about 45 minutes of just chatting back and forth he's tapping his pen he says what the hell are you doing here I, well, the judge said come so i'm here and he just writes things down saying this guy's normal uh, and then we just proceeded to have a conversation for the last 15 minutes of my time that was his, so his uh the diagnosis, diagnosis his the professional diagnosis, diagnosis with you is you seem normal, you can leave. Exactly. Doesn't do you think, yeah. didn't do anything wrong. Yeah. Do you think you're normal? Oh uh, no, I do not think I am normal. I think that the way that my brain works is outside of the norm. I think that my particular perspective on how the universe works is absolutely outside of the norm. I see patterns that other people don't see. I see things other people don't see, and I hear things other people don't hear. Okay. Typically, what I'm hearing, gentlemen is I hear BS from, from others. The, the whole school system, for example, is garbage. The, the, the idea, like philosophically speaking, the idea of authority existing is insane yeah. to me. Now, yeah. we, we're all born the you same way. We're here for the same reason. Our fathers yeah. lied about wearing condoms. That's it. So what makes one person special over top of another? What gives one human being authority? I never agreed or believed in authority from that stance. Uh, so knowledge and accountability generally. Away. Like well, if someone has the ability to be knowledgeable. I'm all of a sudden on common ground with Kevin. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so, 
I knew we'd find something. That's the that's the tag, right? Is that there are a lot of people, you know, and we joke around. I'm having fun with Kevin today because I find this story absolutely it's hilarious. Fascinating. It, it really um, is. But, uh, you know, we joke around and, and it's easy, right? It's like low hanging fruit in the capacity where people are like, are we taxed too much? Well, fuck, 100 percent of people are going to say, yeah, of course we are. Well, you it's like something the like government involvement in your life. 100 percent of people are going to say, no, I don't. Um, so but Kevin takes it to the extreme. And it, again, I'm, I'm trying to understand your story. So your displeasure started in 2000 when you like sent the government your sin, your sin card. And you're like, I'm out. I'm out of the tax game. Does that have anything to do with you not being able that that seems to coincide with you not being able to get work? It does, doesn't it? But uh, no, at the time I was actually running a business and I had. uh, uh, Kevin, uh, I have I have another question. And I I think, listen, you're the fact that you spent this much time with us is fascinating. I like Kevin. I I I like Kevin. He's funny. Uh, He's a good guy. I think you're a very funny guy. I I do. I think I uh, I think your approach maybe here's my thing, right? Like I I also have a I have a brain and I got to stop myself from doing this every once in a while. I'm very skeptical. And I do. I do um, think that that people are out to get me like I I've, I've been wired like that my whole life. And and so I'm on board with the you know what? People are trying to screw you. And when it comes down to money, there's always going to be somebody that's going to try to get into your pocket. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Always. And, and, but I also am I it, k- kind of where the buck stops with me. And this is where my question comes in is I kind of, I can't you, where you lose me in the conspiracy theory of the world's out to get us is that there's some organized sort of thing behind the scenes. Like, like that's, that's where I have. And they're problems. overly concerned with him. Y- yes. Well, and no. So hold on. But also that there's this group of people that are like, that they're behind the, behind the curtain and they're pulling strings and they're planning pandemics and they're just trying to like pit us all against each other. I just, I don't think that our political systems around the world are organized enough and I, I just think that a lot of times certain things happen to us and it's just, it's a product of, of, of the, the world that we live in. Do you think there is a cabal, an organized effort behind the scenes to control our lives and mess with us and make us move to Costa Rica so that we can escape the overly woke world that we now live in? Right. Do you believe that there is that, 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 that sort of that group? It's a movement. It's a special movement. operation against you the world. You brought up Antifa. But yeah, earlier. Okay. Well, the, it's called the World Economic so. Forum, if that's what you're asking. So you do believe in that? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, hold on. Gentlemen, I'll tell you why. Is because I did read Klaus Schwab's book, The Fourth Industrial Revolution, where he comes out and he says he's a billionaire and he wants to have a one world government. He also went out of his way to talk about race, where he said with he, this is not my words. This is Klaus Schwab's words. He said that he needs to reduce the population of white people because white people have the highest propensity for revolution when they are treated unfairly. He also said that they would like to have more wrong? Chinese people and Asians in there because they do what they're told. This is Klaus Schwab, not me. Now, when you've got billionaires talking like this, uh-huh. I do pay attention. Now, I'm not going to sit there and say that Klaus Schwab's meanderings are going to influence everything I do in this lifetime, but I will say that when... The, when there's out, people out there who are seriously into money and they yeah. are seriously telling you what they want to do, you should pay attention. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Totally yeah. agree. Um, now let's just, let's just take this up. I'm a big, I'm a big fan of uh, fact checking. Yeah. Pat fact checking. Big fan. We'll put a bow on this. It's a Lachlan's point. Okay. So you, you said Klaus Schwab says he wants to depopulate the earth of white people and wants more Asian people. Correct. You said that Klaus Schwab said that. That's correct. Okay. It's so working. let's bring this up. Let's bring this up. Definitely, oh, well, that's an article on I you. I think they're over Oh, is like that my name? Population comparisons. Oh, on. here we go again. Yeah. Hate speech. <laughs> no, 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 no. I've got. I I, I'm on the wrong. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I'm on the wrong one. Sorry, dude. I, I le- legitimately am. Uh, this is where you were accused of hate speech, Muslim man. Loathsome example of hate speech. Okay, no, not that one. Hang on a second. Let me go get the other one. Oh, there, there's Remove. my lawyer, Ian McQuaig. Uh, congratulations. Was he your lawyer? Yeah, yeah. See, this is busy. where I lose. I think I, I just think that there's I don't think there's this effort to populate the world with more Chinese people. And well, and that yeah, like I just like that's where I get I get lost well, and, and this, this is why conversation. This is what I, I didn't like doing this guy. Hang this on, is this is Klaus what I'm like. Do, no, you this. said Klaus Schwab said it. So anyway, okay. here we go. Depopulation quote. This is from June 29, 2021, Reuters. 
depending on how you feel about writers. I feel pretty good about writers. Nah, they're okay. Well, yeah, you, no one they're likes okay. things that disagree with them. Though, they're, they're okay. Depopulation quote has been misattributed to Klaus Schwab. A quote about depopulation has been misattributed to the founder of the economic chairman of the World Economic Forum, Klaus uh, Schwab. Uh, social media posts have shared an excerpt saying be taken from a rook, book written by Schwab called COVID-19, The Great Reset. The excerpt reads... Four billion useless eaters shall be eliminated by 2050. Means of limited war, special epidemics, fatal rapid acting diseases and starvation. The population of Canada, Western Europe, United States will be decimated more rapidly than other continents until the world's population reaches a manageable level of one billion, which 500 million will consist of Chinese, Japanese races selected because they are people who have been regimented for centuries and who are accustomed to obeying authority without question. A shirt search showed that the exact extract rather cannot be found in Klaus Schwab's book at all. It does, however, appear in a book by John Coleman called Conspirators, the Hierarchy Story of the Committee 300. Uh, that is where the quote came from. It was from an anti-Klaus Schwab book. It is not an attributed Klaus Schwab. Right, but you picked the wrong book. Story. I said fourth industrial revolution. I didn't say uh, COVID. Well, you got the book. That's because it doesn't exist in that book either. So it, it, okay. it, it, it doesn't. Yeah. So, that's, and, that's and that, that's, that's well, okay. no, no. no, but Fine. again, right, Kev? Stay with me, baby. Stay with I'm, me. I'm staying with you, sweetheart. All right. Well, again, you're looking at gaslighting people with what is absolutely not true that you believe is true. I'm not saying you're doing it intentionally. You believe that that is true. We have just asserted that is wrong. That is not true. You've so, asserted that it's wrong using routers or Reuters. I can probably get about a million and a half different examples of that story written by other people. We might get from, stuck here. I'm yeah, just yeah, warning okay. you. Okay, I, I don't, okay, no, no, it's I like, like it. I'm not going to argue the point. You're saying that, I, that he didn't say that. I'm saying that he did. It's cool. Let's agree. This no, 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 but there's no proof that he did. There's all, only proof that he didn't. Well, but anyway, it's continue. Because, well, how about uh, his, his maniac uh, compadre there, that Yuval Noah Harari? That's the guy. Dude, I can't. I can't believe anything you say now after that whole mess. <laughs> Wait, have you actually? What are we gonna do? What Harari says, though, gentlemen. Well, I'll I'll matter, look into it on my own and use played, choice, reason, choice. But I can't. I did no offense, that These I'm gentlemen gonna, actually yeah. filmed themselves, and we've played them on my show, and people are scratching their heads, thinking, "How is the general public not seeing these things and paying attention to it?" Well, I you know. I, you know what my, my says, opinion would be? My opinion would be the general public isn't paying attention to them and they're not happening. Kevin, are you still podcasting? Yeah. Yeah. On Tuesdays and Thursdays, the Kevin okay. J. Johnson show at 9 p.m. Eastern time. What are we okay. talking last about night, this week? Well, last night we had uh, Rob Anders on the show. He's a former member of parliament. He used to work with uh, Justin Trudeau very closely. He's also a banking expert. That was actually part two of a three-part series talking about how Justin Trudeau is going to allow the bank, the Canada Bank Act, to expire next year on June the 30th, meaning that all the Canadian banks will lose their charter. So again, gentlemen, that wasn't me saying any of that. That was Rob Anders, who was a parliamentarian for 18 years, coming forward. I was asking questions. He was answering questions. That's what I do on my podcast is I will bring in professionals that make their statements, and I will also do as much checking as I possibly can before and afterwards. Uh, some We've had some fruitcakes on the show. Not going to lie. We've had <laughs> real fruitcakes on the show. But we've also had some extremely competent uh, uh, people on the show too. How so do we the find you? Act, how do we find your podcast, Kevin? Freedomreport.ca. <laughs> That's freedomreport.ca. And Tuesday, it's just Thursday, on a web page? Yeah. Uh, have, you been, uh, have you been deplatformed from YouTube? Oh, of course I have. Like, I don't know, 15, uh, okay. 16 times. Yeah, probably. Okay. We're so it's just, over there. So people would have to find you on your on your uh, on your web page as opposed Freedom to trying to PA goes directly to my Rumble channel where there's about 1700 videos right now. Okay. Wow, and is you've there, been busy. Is is there a chance you're on Twitter? My guess yeah. is Yeah, yes. KJ, yeah. Uh, I, okay. I got my account back after a couple of years. Elon Thank gave it back. God for Elon. Hey. Yeah, there you go. So KJJ right. TV 13. KJJ TV 13. You can follow this me has been fascinating. I, I like I'm 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 uh, I'm I enjoyed it. Yeah, I I am. I, I, uh, yes, you you're too. an interesting duck for sure, Kevin. Yeah, Kevin, I would say oh. this. I would say this as a I'm going to come at content a little bit differently. I actually apologize to for calling everybody on your side of the equation hillbillies for four years. So I apologize <laughs> for calling you guys. Hillbillies. Well, I accept. Uh, 
Okay, buddy. I appreciate that. Uh, and saying you are less than other people, that is not true. You're just like everybody else trying to figure it out. But you've got an angle. you got a thing. you got some bluster. you got all that stuff. Um, and, I, and I will say this, Kev. My advice to you as a man to another man from listening to your story and as you explain it would be a couple of words you should look into. I think everybody could do this. Here's some stoicism First, for you, Kevin. Self-awareness. Like, you know, what part do you play in the chaos in, in your life? Because well, as, 380 as a guy, court dates, got... 22 different rests, I would look, I would can, I would think about it. Like, my dad always used to I say know what the he answer was a, is. But, I got a big mouth. I know exactly. Yeah, what yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I know. Right? Yeah. You can't help I got yourself. a big mouth. It's an emotional thing. But my dad used to say to me, and I'll leave you with this, Kev. Yeah. If one person has a problem with you, maybe it's maybe it's pretty equal. Maybe it's two people that just have a have a problem. I could but fill a room. Everybody has a problem with you. You might want to look into what you're doing. And I'm like, sure. I was 12 when my dad told me that. Totally got it right away. And then, so I would tell you the same thing as a man to a man, as a content guy, and to a guy who's do, doing content. I would say, give her, dude. Give her. And I appreciate the honesty about your situation and having the stones to come on this show. Anytime yeah, someone awesome. comes on, it's like, you know, it's, it's unfriendly territory, right? But we're trying to talk to other people. You're cool about talking to us. I wish you was a human being, nothing but peace and happiness. And we'll talk to you soon, Kev. Well, Dean, look, this has been an absolute pleasure. And I'm just going to tell you that I do not disagree with what you just said. I am well aware of who and what I am. And I am well aware of how I am perceived by set groups of people. Uh, I think the only thing that I would ever say in my defense, even though defense is not required in this, would be that anybody who's on the far left who disagrees with my stance would never be a customer anyway. Uh, the, the customers I do have are the ones that either think like me or need someone who thinks like me to help them with their issues. And I'm okay with this. That yeah. means, Dean... Um, I'm probably relegating myself to about maybe 30% of the population that can, can tolerate me. It's not a great 70% business model. can't. Yeah, it's not a great business model. If you're going to be in the content game, you want it He's to apply okay. to everybody, right? Yeah, Kevin's yeah, doing okay. Well, I, I, I get what you're saying. I, I, I don't think we're going to push him into the middle here. <laughs> well, not today. I would much rather be in the middle, guys. I would much rather the country be the country yeah. that I grew up in. Canada was a phenomenal place. I love, I adored you miss my it? time in Southern Ontario from 1970. Uh, I get about 77. I became cognizant of the world around me. I'm you miss it right around when they, uh, they, they, um, they brought in seatbelt laws. Do you miss Canada? Do you miss I Canada? remember standing on the back seat of the car and sleeping on the right. back dashboard of a nice. 70 Impala. <laughs> Do you miss Canada, Kev? You coming back one day? Probably one day. Yeah. Um, right. Look, don't get me wrong. The country is beautiful. You know, you've, I've traveled the whole country now. It's beautiful. Yeah. especially Alberta. I adore Alberta and I love the layout of Calgary. I've got so many good friends and, and uh, family in, in uh, Canada, but the politics it's, I can't, I can't be a part of it. It's uh, very, you don't, very you know, I find that to be hilarious too. Is that when people go, I can't because of the politics, you do have a choice not to pay attention to it. <laughs> that Everybody is true. Does. It's like, yeah, yeah, like fuck, I'm moving still, out of Edmonton because the radio sucks. It's like, yeah, are you really? I'm, I'm still, guys, I'm interested in economic opportunity. And, and what I'm doing for people here, um, I really can't do in Canada. No kidding. Because a bunch of people yeah. dodging taxes down there. <laughs> anyway, talk to you soon, Kevin. Thanks, buddy. Definitely. Appreciate Thank you, gentlemen. I appreciate it. Anytime, this. Kevin J. Johnson, was, ladies and that gentlemen. That was entertaining, Kevin. Thank you. Yeah, that was good, wasn't it? Yeah. Dude, you, you did great. <sighs> I'm still, I'm still angry at you. Hey, I just got to restart my, been, and then you went and had a meeting. I'm, I, I have, dude, I, I got Hey, it. Kevin, nice to meet you. Hey, I'll be, I'm restarting, which I knew is bullshit. I'd re, I restarted my computer at the start, and then I had a phone call from our new podcast hosting 25, partner. 25 minutes. We just did a huge deal with them to pay and, you. And I appreciate and that. I appreciate that. Thank you. So, gonna, and, and I didn't tell you about it ahead of time and I knew I had a crunch and it was one of those decisions where you're like, okay, I got two things going on at one time. I can inconvenience Lachlan because he's my friend, but I can't inconvenience our new business partner. You know so, what so you I do? Like, you know what you do, Dean? You inconvenience me when the muse girls are on. Then I can have a nice, pleasant conversation with the two nice, nice looking ladies. You don't do it when, hey, Kevin. <laughs> 
Kevin in Costa Rica. You know, the best part of that was I the only reason it's I felt like, bad son of a bitch. is because he showed up like early. You showed up early. It's like it's like one twenty five or supposed to start. I didn't even I don't even mind Kevin. I I don't <laughs> I don't. I'm just trying to give you a hard time. It, that, no, it, I know it wasn't that bad. Hey, by the way, I was doing some reading on Kevin. Um, and the guy he said was on his show also uh, was prosecuted for tax evasion. Well, th- there's a lack of accountability here. I, and, and here, can, can I can I say this? I think I think you yeah. got you got ex- extreme sides of the equation here, right? You got, you know, I think we are overly, and I know that it drives the left crazy. We are a little overly woke right now, and and I think that needs to be said out loud. Totally, but. But then you got a guy like Kevin who's hiding from paying taxes in Costa Rica. I mean, let's let's boil it down you know, to, and, and to, to what it really point, is. To your point, and I'll be real quick, all the, the reasons he gave us for his persecution and yeah. why his life went the way it would is because of the thing you just said. Well, and it wasn't because he's a white male. No. He, he, he might have had, had, had something to do with the fact that he relinquished his sin card. In 2000, right? Like, I, so, you know what I, I loved mean, about that is where you're like, does that strangely coincide with the same timeline of you not being? Ah, <laughs> uh, so, uh, but again, I think what we've done to ourselves in this world, that th- this very <coughs> divisive world, this this you know, and we're very divided still, even though um, I think there is an attempt now to try to to open up the lines of communication with people like Kevin, right? And uh, Dean and Kevin hooking up today and having a conversation as disjointed as that was. And as frustrating as that I was, really um, I mean, we, we are, we, do, we do need to still question things that are happening in the world around us. I, I think we do. I think you can go too far and you can end up in Costa Rica, but <laughs> I think there is, there is a time and a place to ask questions about what's yeah. happening to us. And, and so that, that's a good thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's kind of been beaten out of us because you go, if you say it out loud, you say any of these things out loud. And and again, I, I, it seems a little misplaced to me mentioning this after having Kevin J. Johnston on the podcast. But when you do question things, and when we did question things, COVID, for example, people did get persecuted. So Kevin's not wrong about that. He just took it to the next level, right? Like, I, I was saying this, and we kind of touched on it yesterday. Listen. With the combination of social distancing, with the combination of the mask, with the vaccine, I realized that I was just doing my part. And and if you break each individual piece down, the mask, the social, all of it, should we have closed this down? Should we shut down at this time? Da, 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 da. There, there, there's quite, back in the day when you did question it, you would get hauled out. My problem was, and this is, and I brought this up countless times was that we were not allowed to have these conversations. Even if you were in the middle, not crazy, but even if you were in the middle, you weren't allowed to, and you were scared to bring up anything that questioned authority. And and that's a problem, and that needs to be investigated. And that's what Kevin's not wrong about. Yeah. Is, right? Like I guess. I, but but let, me, let me ask you something, okay? Because what I noticed in that interview, which I thought was interesting, is it he he didn't mention he didn't mention masks he didn't mention covid none of those he did. things brought up that he didn't wear one right like he's never yeah. going on whatever good he didn't vaccinate clearly but even if he did or he didn't that whole thing the whole story that we finally got to at the end piece right the end piece was down here helping other people who don't want to pay taxes not pay taxes essentially uh Every arrest, the story about him running for mayor, which we debunked in the middle of that, which he was, you know, he never pulled any higher than last or second last. Um, no receipts. I don't think technically he was even a candidate. Was didn't that, no, no, not not really. He just because he couldn't he run because he didn't yeah. live there long enough or something. And I, I that mean, came with a fundraiser. Everything he does support me because I got arrested. I need money. Fundraiser. Everything. Fundraiser. 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 Almost like you know the one man rebel news show, right? Yeah. Where He's an interesting doctor. Very interesting. And to your point, he was so off the rails during the pandemic. Like one of those guys that you'd see get arrested all the time and just a stunt on 
on his freedoms. But it was never about that. It was about painting himself. You know, when Russell Brand went out, Russell Brand was like, never listen to the news, never listen to the news. Three years later, it's the news is like, oh, by the way, you're a pedophile. He's like, I told you, never listen to the news. It's like, <laughs> he's like, it's the yeah. same thing with this where he's like, I'm persecuted, I'm persecuted, I'm persecuted. And during those conversations, you pull out a nugget from somewhere. It's like, okay, tell me about your tax situation. And he's like, no, I don't pay taxes. Yeah. Okay. And the, what do you do down there? How do you make but, money? Are you there legally? All that other My stuff. point being, Dean, like I, I wanted to, I wanted to like make a point. We got to continue to ask questions, right? Those, we, we, that, we have to. Yeah. That, that is, you're hundred percent right. But that's not what that, that's not what and he's getting at. That's why I'm saying it's a little and misplaced. It. It, it sounds a little out outside yeah. of where we should be going with this conversation just based on what happened. But again, like I, like why were we not having more conversations during that time about the impact of the lockdown on our mental health? Why were we not having more conversations about to, you know, about we were, we, we had all these rules in place about what we could and couldn't do and how many people we could have in our fucking house and all that. But there was never any conversation about, you know, what we could be doing health wise to protect our immunities, right? Like there was a lot of things we should have been doing and we didn't do them. And it was bothersome to me like that. And, and, and what I, totally. And, and you know what? You're I didn't move to Costa right. Rica. I put he, the fucking mask on. I, I followed the rules and yeah, I shut my mouth at times. That's not why I, he moved to Costa Rica either. I he moved to Costa Rica because he did can't get a job because he won't pay his taxes because he's indignant and he's like fuck the world i know some I people that moved to mexico because they didn't want to get the vaccine me too i know people who moved to costa rica bolivia i know a yeah. dude that moved to portugal uh he's like fuck it i'm going to lisbon i'm like for how long he goes i have no idea but i hate it here hates trudeau hates it. all that stuff's good do whatever you want i mean no problem mm. but when someone tells you that they're doing something like that Generally speaking, they're doing something like that because it's attached to several other issues. Yes. And yes. it's really convenient to go medical tyranny. But in the background, you're like, you can skip out on five years worth of taxes. <laughs> yeah. Or I'm wanted by the law. Yeah. So, yeah. and by the way, the story that he told about trying to escape Canada, I almost pissed my fucking pants. Don't you remember that? So we hard. talked about that on this podcast. I do now. Yeah. As he was talking about it. I, but I don't like, there's a whole story about who was there to pick him up too across the line. <laughs> <laughs> he did yeah. the part where he's like, so I just hunkered down in a snowbank. It was really cold because it was like minus 48. He almost died. He almost died. Here's the other thing too that I will say. As much as he I don't really like doesn't want this to, politician. He really that, doesn't want to pay taxes. No. That's all I got. As much as I don't like this politician or that politician, there's also something else to be said out loud here. These like Justin Trudeau isn't going to shut down the banking system in Canada. I mean, no. like I, there we have checks and balances in place um, in it, politically in Canada and in North America and democratic societies that don't that don't allow. Although <sighs> Trump is really pushing the load on the. It's getting there to your point. No one took his bank account. The city of Calgary and the people of Calgary didn't were not intimidated by how much power Antifa, he wielded. A gang of first... Antifa thugs didn't show up at his house. I'm pretty sure that seven but... times with masks on because they didn't want to get COVID. It's probably his neighbors trying to get him to move out of the neighborhood. <laughs> you know, people are going to listen we're to that podcast. Of, it was we're kind of killing the whole point of doing the podcast to begin no, with kevin was very gracious enough to get on here yes but and, we're allowed to share his story funny. it is dude funny. it's he was laughing with us we're not we're not shitting on the guy i give him credit i, I told you i give him credit for showing up when he did and this is like as busy being in the visitors clubhouse dude he's like yeah i'll come on and like good because i want to know all about you and we did and that is generally there's, the point. Lock the there's cross. quite a few holes in the story but again <laughs> All right, you ready for the locker room retro replay of the day? Brought to you by Ardent Roof Systems and my man Stacy Disatel, Owen Corning's number one platinum partner, guarantees his work. Yes, I am. What do you have for us today? By the way, next week we are going to. Um, I just found out about this just before we jumped on the podcast. I got an email from Stacy from 
Arden Roof Systems, ardenroofsystems.com to sign up for the uh, golf tournament. But we've got the um, we got a member of Owens Corning coming on next week. Dean, I'll get you the details, but we're going to talk a little bit about that business because they're actually sponsoring. They're very charitable, so they actually give back to the to the charities that the companies that they work for are a big part of. So they're a very charitable organization as well. So and they're a big part of the golf tournament. So we're going to be talking awesome. with. Uh, Jonathan, um, his last name is escaping me right now, but that's next, that's next week. I'll keep you posted on that. Cool. All right. So this Thanks, one kind of speaks for itself. I, I, um, I wasn't aware of what, uh, a cuck was. Did, did you know, do you know what a cuck is? Yeah. It's a dude who's a kept man. Okay. Effectively. And I wasn't kept man. I was confused about cuck holding, cuck holding. Cuckolding. Cuck, yeah. So um this say was a cuckolding. conversation that we cuck say it again. Cuckolding. Cuckolding. Cuck yeah. Cuckolding. Yeah, yeah. Cuck -cuck. Cuck -cuck. It's a sexual fetish with an individual lock, 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 around lock, 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 lock. someone else. We had a long discussion yesterday about uh cuckolding. <laughs> yes, we did. <laughs> okay, now I'm not sure I'm clear on this. Uh, so this is a fetish, right? Yeah. Okay, I've seen some videos, but I'm very confused. Who initiates this? I don't know if it's the man or the woman that would initiate it. I don't know. And and maybe people can um, probably send both, me a note on this. But I always thought that this was more of a punishment for the man. No, no. The, the men are into it. The men are into it. The men okay. like watching and like... There are some videos where it like looks Jimmy's like... Jimmy's a watcher. It does look like sometimes the man doesn't like it and that she's punishing him. That's his fetish is like being punished being upset about ah uh, like it being called like a wimp and like okay check it out i'm way more man than you are i'm glad i met you <laughs> and now i have a better handle on cuckolding the locker room topic of the day we were discussing what you thought your last words might be then it turned into a, a conversation about cuckolding <laughs> It's only, you know, it's a natural progression. Okay. From last words to this. Now, we did get a clarification. It's, well, it's the, not so much a uh, fetish. Yeah, Bob was upset because we called it a fetish. He said, it, no, it's a kink. Okay, and then he brought up pegging. <laughs> With a winky face, he texted okay. it. All right, Bob has got some... Bob's got some kinks. He's got some busy fetishes. weekends. <laughs> so we learn things. <laughs> we learn things from you. <laughs> so thank you, Bob. Pat also said it's nature's way of taking the week out of the gene pool. Cuckoldiness. Well, does somebody have to die afterwards? <laughs> like, well, now I'm reproducing because they don't get to make the love, right? Oh! Right, so... So the guy in the chair, has he's the weaker end of the species? Yeah, yeah he's the cuck. Okay. <laughs> Sounds like a word I shouldn't be able to say on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> It'll probably get added to the list <laughs> after the show. There you go. Your whole definition. See, not a lot of people on the radio. This is what makes you so special on the radio lot. This is what made you what you were. You know, not what? a lot of radio guys don't have to have have enough of a of a suspended ego that they can go into a break like that and go explain this to me something that everybody's well aware of that you somehow you missed. I didn't know. I didn't know yeah. what it was. I I knew what it was, but I didn't technically know what it was. Actually, Cuckolding. what makes that even funnier is that that was from one of our live broadcasts in Jamaica from a sandals resort when we went <laughs> down there with ten other radio stations. And every other radio station was talking about some huge news that happened in the royal family. And we spent yeah. the whole morning talking cuck about being a cuck. <laughs> and that other shows would be turning around going, what are they doing? What are they doing? It's just, like not talking about the news. Well, it's news to you if you don't know what cuckolding is. And you want to have that conversation live. Sexual fetish in which an individual gets turned on by their partner having sex, with, uh, sex acts with someone else. This is absolutely not in my wheelhouse of kink. I would not be able to watch somebody no. go after my wife. Yeah, and but the I, dude that would be a bad day. It. Yeah, the, like to to me, that's that's called divorce. <laughs> to some guys, it's a massive turn on, right? I don't get that. those guys. I want to know what's in their head. It's like the same. We dude. should get somebody that does that on the podcast, and then have I an would love that. hour and a half podcast with them. <laughs> Let's talk about. I would love to, dude. These are my favorite podcasts to do. Everybody out there in Radio Land, you can get all upset. You can say, what are you doing? Why aren't you interviewing news people? Why aren't you talking about the news? I'm so exhausted by it. The Dean 1.0, Fat Dean, is making really good friends with Dean 2.0. 
And this is the stuff I want to talk about. Cuckolding. I want to have Fat Dean's back. It's just, you just look skinnier. And he's a bit of a snack to the ladies, a bit of a middle-aged snack. You are a middle-aged snack, by the I way. I really the feel Dean, like one. The Dean store to buy that shirt. Maybe you're middle a middle-aged snack. snack. Yeah, yeah. You can get it at the Dean store, which is in the description of the podcast. You can get a bunch of stuff there, including save Lachlan shirts. Go and uh, do yourself a favor. That's phase. on the lock, sh- the lock store. The, the locker, locker room, room store. I can Merch put page. save Lachlan cross shirts up on the Dean store if you want. <laughs> yeah, do it, because we still need to make you money. And the less Arden- money we make from that, the, the more money we make from that, the less money I, I have to ever think about giving ever you. Pay ever pay me. Uh, the ArdenRoofSystems.com um, uh, webpage is where you sign up for the um, for the golf tournament that is happening Friday, July 5th. Actually, a couple of people reached out to me. They've signed up. That's going to be a good day. Still awesome. looking for sponsorships as well. Dean's coming out. He's golfing with us, so he's booking his flight tonight. He's looking at his Avion point. Yet, but No, TD Rewards. Okay, you're getting a flight out here and you're going to stay with me and we're golfing yeah. on July 5th. Do I have to stay with you? I you always, do not. I hate that. I'm not a good stayer at people's Okay, houses. well then like, don't stay, but please come on. You can get uncomfortable, like where you're at someone and you're, you go into their space. You can come over for dinner kitchen, and then you get in and you're like, yeah. I want to grab a coffee, but I don't want to ask because I hate asking people for shit. I'm the worst house guest ever, but I will stay with you if there's a clean space, there's sheets clean are done, space. and if Deb's there. Because if you're just just you and me, no, someone's gonna Deb's get always here. alcohol poisoning and eat a whole kielbasa. Is what I'm saying. We're we're good. We're good. Deb's always around. All right. Yeah, we'll have I'm a coming. babysitter. Okay. You promise me. July 5th, I will be there for the Yard and Roof Systems Golf Tournament in support okay. of Stollery Children's Life Program, Child Life Program. Really appreciate it. I will. And be on there. Friday, um, we'll see you at uh, Monster Pro Wrestling. Get your tickets. And if you are interested in going, send me a note. I'll I'll hook you up with the way to get tickets. Okay, the guest list is full. Okay, all right. Yeah, you filled it up. Hey, I filled media. it up. Good By the way, you. I also have a very funny video for you to show uh, to to see. We'll show that to you tomorrow or the next day. Um, it's I went down to the to the lair they call it. It's where they practice for Monster Pro Wrestling and did a little promo video with Massive. <laughs> we gotta play it tomorrow. Yeah, it's Thursday, so it'll be like the day before the event. We can maybe get him to sell some tickets at the gate. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, we'll leave it at that. All right, I don't want to know anymore. Thanks, buddy. Right. Lock and the Muse Girls and tomorrow. That's happening. Yeah, big time. Okay. Uh, the Muse Girls are back. I think Emily Riley might be joining us. Muse Massage Spa, one of our partners, uh, clinical sexologists, educators, advocates, owners of Muse Massage Spa, twelve ninety Finch Avenue West, here in the beautiful city of Toronto. Uh, and What's you go the to Dean Massage Deal. Spa.com. The Dean Deal is you DM them, go to their contact section on their website. Send them a quick note. Say, listen, I'm looking for the Dean deal. $50 off any visit and very discreet. And they'll kind of help educate you as to how the therapeutic portion of going to a body rub parlor works. Because it does. I thought it was a salad on this. I'm up on this. Salad tossing. Oh, by the way, it's like next week there. It's kink week. I've seen some ads. Oh, dude, it's awesome. You can like. Yeah. I don't have one, so I'm good. But are you sure? Oh, hundred percent. You don't have any kinks? No, I don't think I do. No. I it's have really things tradition. that I like, but I yeah, don't yeah, have yeah, kinks. But... Yeah. Are you hundred percent, yeah. I don't have Me, like... I had a conversation with um with you know, like somebody. Jimmy likes pregnant women? Well, yeah, but Jimmy's got a he's got a handful of them. Like he's got a baker's dozen, I think. <laughs> Baker's dozen of kinks. Anyway, so no, I was having a conversation with a guy who was very upset about me bringing up one of his kinks in a very public manner, and it wasn't it wasn't a very severe kink, but uh, like when I when we mentioned that he had this kink slash fetish because there's a bit of a difference, he was like, "It's not a fetish, it's not a kink." But then when you really take a look at it. Like when you really step outside of it, I'm like, dude, you like this. Oh, but save it for tomorrow for Emily and Riley. I want to know what it is. I don't even want to know what it is right now, but I want to know well, what it is. He's tomorrow. mad at me for bringing it up. So I'm not going to bring it up again, but give him a different I, name. Okay. Barry. <laughs> it's probably his real name. <laughs> kind of like I, I, uh, I told my buddy, um, Carl Craig Stevenson. I wouldn't mention him on this program anymore. It's like, dude, did you say my name on the podcast last week? 
Like, what are you talking about? This is a couple months ago. I something about me doing something game. stupid at poker, and I'm like, probably. And he's like, can you not do it anymore? So I said to my buddy Craig Stevenson, you bet I won't drop your whole name on the podcast. Is this the guy that has a bunch of really serious beliefs that no one agrees with anymore and you don't want him at poker? <laughs> yeah. Also, well, the no same guy that, off. This, yeah, also Craig Stevenson, who will go unnamed, was the same guy that came out of uh, his, his bedroom at a poker party to his house with handcuffs and like a 12-inch dilly. And I was like, what's that? He goes, well, I just, just, we got some new flair upstairs in the bedroom. He goes, everybody's into this, right? And I'm like, no, not everybody is into that. And the whole place got quiet. And my buddy's like, okay. And he turned around and went back upstairs, came back down. Poker was not the same after that. <laughs> poker was not it's- the same. Everybody's like, uh, who's the big blind? Who's the small blind? Okay. Yeah. You know what? I'm going to go. And <laughs> slowly these people start to filter out. And my buddy, Craig Stevenson, who has the dilly handcuff kink, who I will go nameless. It's funny. That he's you're like, was a it poker, me? Poker party at his place. And he's into pegging. He goes, was it something I did? I go, chances are. Yeah. Yeah. Might've been the, uh, the show and tell pegging. of all the sex toys, you and your wife at your buddy's fucking poker party, dude. Might've been it. He's like, well, everybody's into that, right? I go, no, actually. He goes, thank God I didn't. Thank God a what? <laughs> thank God I didn't. My buddy Craig Stevenson. It's like, thank God I didn't get out the apparatus. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I don't need to know any more of that one. You and your wife just go have a great time tonight. He's like, all right, thanks. All right, I need a nap after this one. Yeah. Thanks for doing that. Okay, Good thanks, buddy. All right, lots and cross. See you tomorrow. Yeah, you betcha. Follow him on Twitter at Lock and Cross. He's my friend. He can be your friend too for nine ninety nine a month. Not even nine hundred ninety nine. Nine dollars ninety nine cents a month. He's hoping to get a thousand friends, so you can make ten grand a month. It's actually not a bad idea. Charge people for friendship. We live in a world where that could be a possibility. Anyway, have a great day, everybody. Appreciate you being part of the show. As always, brought to you by our very good friends at Rome Auto. Looking for a car? Don't want to buy one? Only got a certain amount of money to spend a month? Don't want to put a big chunk down? Don't want a 7- to 10-year lease? You don't need one. Drive on your own terms with my friends at Rome.Auto, a car subscription company called Rome is in the greater Toronto area. They just launched, and right now you can roam with my friends at Rome. Roam with Dean is your promo code, 150 off your first month, home delivery of that vehicle, flexible monthly plans, no lease or interest payments. Here's the deal. This is why it's so awesome. That one payment, and you can browse any car you want. They got Teslas, Beamers, Hyundais, Fords, they got it all. You can browse cars. You get insurance, routine maintenance, roadside assistance included. The only thing you pay for is fuel, and when you're done with it, you simply hand it in. Yeah, almost like on par. In fact, it's cheaper. If you factor in routine maintenance, insurance on a monthly basis. This is a cheaper option to get into a car and a risk-free option to get out of that car. And these good people, my friends, Julie, Christelle, everybody over at Rome, uh, a burgeoning little business car subscription company. It is going to take over the country. It is going to take over this city. Featured in Blog TO, Yahoo, Benzinga, CBC, 4.9 stars on Google, thousands of happy drivers. Rome with Dean is your promo code. Go to Rome.auto for more details. Sign up today. Get $150 off your first month. Uh, Hey, my friend Colin makes torque wrenches, by the way. I don't know if anybody knows this. Colin Livingston, he's the owner, operator, founder of CanTorque. It's a hardworking torque wrench tool expert solution, a shop out of Edmonton. They give you the very best in sales service, rental calibration, maintenance, and custom fabrication of industrial torque tools. Torque tools, super simple. Uh, Canada's CanTorque is the top of the line torque and tension tool specialist, flange maintenance systems, impact sockets. You can uh, rely on the very best quality in the world. And how I know this is this gentleman is all over the world. I think he just got back from China, was in Dubai, uh, operates in Canada for heavy industry around the world. He's been doing it for 20 years. Colin is it. And they get solutions for bolting things that you cannot find a bolting solution for. Any loosening or fastening solution. Need a torque wrench. Proudly Canadian. uh, Owned and operated and manufactured here in Canada. Edmonton, Alberta, as a matter of fact. So if you want to see their products, they've got a full range on their website. Go to cantorque.com for more information. It's products, services, news, podcasts. You can check out his podcast called Talking Torque. You can become 
distributor as well. So check them out today. Also brought to you by our friends at Fact Check. Do you believe what you read, see, hear, feel, touch, videos, pictures, everything's misrepresented, people lie, torque stories? Uh, we just went through it uh, with a Reuters story and our friend Kevin J. Johnson, who was like, hey, this is Clive Schwab said this. Well, we, we just dummied that real quick. But why bother doing it yourself when there is tech and software available to break the tie, to prove a point, and to correct the record, go to factcheck.io today. Sign up for their beta test. Very robust. It gives you a full imprint of whatever it is that came from social media that supported that information. It gives you actual sources to combat disinformation. It also scores and verifies the information that you're reading from uh, thousands of sources all in real time. You cannot miss with this. Give yourself agency over what you read. Join the Fact Check beta team today, F-A-K-T-C-H-E-K.io. Go to factcheck.io, F-A-K-T-C-H-E-K.io today. And we're brought to you by my friends at Muse Massage Spa. We just gave them a big pump, so we're going to give them a little pump at the end here, too. Emily and Riley are lovely people. They've got an incredible operation called Muse Massage Spa. It's at 1290 Finch Avenue West, Unit 13, Toronto, Ontario. Check out their website today, brand new, musemassagespa.com. And you can also get in a little deal from them. Go to the contact area. Send them a DM. Say, hey, listen, Dean told me I could get a special deal. What's the deal? They'll walk you through it. They'll bring you down to the spa. They'll give you a very discreet, actual therapeutic session. Check their schedule. Choose your muse and download their podcast. Activists uh, in the sex work industry, sexologists and educators, uh, these women are on it. Uh, Emily and Riley, very funny, very entertaining. And they've got a podcast called Muse on the Mic where they talk about all the goings on in the muse, massage, spa, body, parlor industry. And they dish. The Patreon aspect of it is awesome. It's totally uncensored. You can download and subscribe to their YouTube channel as well. Um, use on the mic is the name of the podcast. You can also get it at Cryer Media. Very happy to have the ladies part of the network too. And partners here at Cryer Media and partner of the Dean Blundell Show, Muse Massage Spa, 1290 Finch Avenue West. Ladies and gentlemen, have a great day. I didn't plan on doing that for an hour and 41 minutes, but here we are. Uh, thanks for being part of the show as always. We appreciate it because you can give us your time. So much more valuable than things and you can't get your time back. So thank you. Always full of gratitude that you spent an hour or so with us today. Have a great day. Rate, subscribe. Everything we do is at uh, YouTube as well. Crier.co, YouTube, Crier Media, Dean Blundell Show. Have a nice time. See you tomorrow with the Muse, ladies. Bye. Uh -huh.